Yo, what's good, y'all? Back with another one. I'm just going to talk about my expectations going forward and my current feelings about the 49ers. Look, y'all, right now, as we speak, on this day, I'm loving what I'm seeing with us, man. Like, real shit, yo. Like, we're hitting our stride at the perfect time, in my opinion, because... We started off hot, which we normally don't do because normally the 49ers after five games would be like two and three. You feel what I'm saying? Or three and two, some some weird shit like that. And then they'll go into a midseason slump because I still remember 2021 like it was yesterday. 2021, we started the season two and five that year before we got going. And got to the NFC Championship game, a game that, in my opinion, we should have fucking won. But that's another conversation for another day. But we normally start slow during to to a season, but this year we didn't. We actually started fast. We started five and zero, including blowouts over the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys in the first couple of weeks. Like you, find what I'm saying to one great team and one pretty good team. But then we went into that three-game slump where we didn't have Trent Williams. We didn't have Debo Samuel. Brock Purdy, in my opinion, was concussed against Minnesota. But they found a way out of it, man. You feel what I'm saying? Like, they had, they found a way out of it. And then we still got – we still had more injuries to come because we lost Talanoa Hufunga, but which also opened the door for Jair Brown to step in because – about Jair Brown, that's one fucking kid. I've been on the bandwagon, pause, since Jump Street. I saw him play at Penn State up close. Are you feel what I'm saying? Like, because he's a local kid. He's from Jersey. And he went to Penn State. I saw him play with in a secondary with Caleb King and Joey Porter Jr. And he shined just as bright as both of them. So that's why I said, I don't understand how he slipped to the third round. I don't get it because that kid was a ball magnet in Penn, at Penn State. Like he was always around the ball. He was always being the top playmaker. Like, and then finding out that today after watching the Richard Sherman podcast, finding out that he used to play cornerback in high school and even in junior college. Now I see why his instincts are so fucking elite, even as a rookie. I see why that he, why he's so, why he's such an instinctive playmaker. And he's, and he's, yo, the boy, the kid is fucking special. I think he's going to be an all pro next year. That's just my opinion. I think Jair Brown's going to be an all pro next year. Like, I think that highly of him. But as far as the 49ers is concerned, as the, as a group, as a whole, Having that happen and then going to go get Chase Young, a player that I've been I've had my own eye on for the last two years. Like you feel what I'm saying? Like that a guy that I wanted the 49ers to go get. But I didn't think he was ever gonna leave Washington. I didn't think Washington was gonna be that slow and let him go. But they did. And we went and got him for a third round pick. He helped put some juice back into the defense. Steve Wilkes who should be fucking, I don't understand why Steve Wilkes not getting no credit. Like, it's annoying as fuck to me why he doesn't get any credit. But Steve Wilkes, in my opinion, Steve Wilkes is, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I got to say this. Steve Wilkes is doing a better overall job to me than D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala. And I'm going to explain real quick because D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala were absolutely phenomenal coordinators. Absolutely phenomenal. Love both of them. But the one thing we did struggle, we used to struggle against, we used to struggle against mobile quarterbacks because we would leave lanes too open. And Steve Wilkes, we don't struggle against mobile quarterbacks anymore. So like, that's why I'm loving the way he schemes it up. Like you follow what I'm saying? It took some time. It took a few weeks. Like, People were talking about firing him. I think that was always fucking bullshit. That was ludicrous. Like, he never should have been discussed being fired. But Steve Wilkes is a bright, sharp offense. I mean, defensive mind. Like, I saw him last year when everybody counted Carolina out. The Panthers damn near came all the way back 
from a two and eight start and almost made the playoffs. Steve Wilkes has a way of rallying the troops. That's how I want. That's why I wanted him so bad when Carolina stupidly made the decision not to bring him back. That's why I wanted him so bad when he was let go by the Panthers. And like I said, I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm like, this is this might be the best 49ers team I've seen since probably the 2012 version. The 2012 Diners was the best team to be. The best 49ers team in the last 30 years since 1994. But this team is to me is probably better because I feel like this team is more versatile than that team. Are like you following? Saying because a lot of a lot the 2012 team was both was physically tough, but I, we wasn't scheme versatile. This team is physically tough. They're mentally tough and they're scheme versatile. Like you follow? I'm saying like we can adjust to any style of football, and that's why I love this team to death, man. And that's why I feel like this is finally the year that we can win the Super Bowl. But got a big game. Next week against the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not going to overlook the Arizona Cardinals, though, but we should win that game. But the Baltimore Ravens, that's the game I'm going to break down from top to bottom because that's a fucking heavyweight fight. That's Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. That's what that is. But I'm wait, I can't I can't wait to watch this team some more, man, because I'm about to go watch them feel right now because I'm excited about this team. But y'all tell me what y'all think. I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace.